Okay, the Lewis structure for boron trihydride. Uh, I've never seen it. I think it's uh, quite an unstable molecule. So boron is in group 13 with three valence electrons and hydrogen is in group one with one valence electron. So that gives me a total of three plus one plus one plus one because there's three hydrogens of six valence electrons. And you know what? I want to know about the pairs. The electrons go around in pairs divide by two. So I've actually got three pairs of valence electrons. B for boron, that's the first atom in the formula. So almost certainly that goes in the middle and then surround it evenly by the remaining atoms. Now I've got three pairs of electrons to distribute uh, and I've got to make this into one molecule. So really it can only be that, that and that. Hydrogen is satisfied by having one pair of electrons. It has two electrons in a full outer shell. But boron, well, boron uh, is unusual. Boron can have a stable sextet. That means boron can be stable with six electrons in its outer shell. Two, four, six. It can also be stable with eight. So I could just do that, and that would be a stable octet. But this video is about the stable sextet. The other way you could draw this, there's two ways you can draw most Lewis structures. Is there borons in group 13? So I've got three electrons and hydrogen is in group one. I've got one electron and then just pair them up. That gives you the same answer. Okay, what's the shape of this molecule? Uh, well, it's this shape. It's flat and it's a triangle. So it's trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. And the reason for that is that these pairs of electrons in the valence shell repel each other equally. So if you've got three things that are repelling each other equally, how are they going to get as far away from each other as possible? Well, it's the sides of an equilateral triangle. So if they asked you, why is it this shape? The central atom has three electron domains and no lone pairs. And remember, an electron domain, or well, it's a single, a double, a triple, or a lone pair of electrons. So the bond angle there is 120 degrees. Let's look at the polarity of the molecule uh, and the bonds. So if you want to look at bond polarity, you've got to check the electronegativity values. So here's my electronegativity table. Electronegativity is a measure of uh, the attraction of an atom for the electrons in a bond. So fluorine has the highest electronegativity of four. So boron has an electronegativity of two and hydrogen is 2.2. So hydrogen slightly pulls the electrons towards itself. So 2.2 for the hydrogens and 2.0. So the bonds well, you could argue the bonds are nonpolar. The difference between these two electronegativity values, if that difference is less than 0 0.3, you're okay to say it's a nonpolar bond. Of course, strictly speaking, it's very slightly polar. The higher electronegativity hydrogens are putting the electrons to the outside of that molecule. So nonpolar bonds, and if the bonds are nonpolar, well, you can also say that the molecule is nonpolar as well. If you wanted to be fussy about it, you could show these dipoles here for the bonds. And since the bond dipoles cancel overall, if these were vector arrows, you add them up, they just cancel to zero. You can say that the molecule itself is also nonpolar. All right, uh, formal charge. And now, formal charge is normally used to decide which of different Lewis structures is the most stable. Uh, but since there's only one Lewis structure here, it's a little bit pointless, but you could be asked to do it. So the calculation for formal charge is the number of valence electrons. In this case, it's going to be three for boron minus the number of bonds, three. And there's no lone pairs, so overall boron's going to have a formal charge of zero. Hydrogen, one valence electron minus one bond, that's also going to be zero. Okay, so we're done.